This summer, experience no one getting laid. Well, except Mark Zuckerberg and the furry femboys in VR chat, and experience the wonderful world of interaction in VR. For some reason, VR game devs think that in order to make a good VR game, you need this ultra realistic experience where if Isaac Newton doesn't spawn in the game and starts throwing apples at you, then it's not real enough and the Quest kitties aren't gonna give us their mom's credit card. I need DoorDash money this week. Come on, Derek, I need this. In this wonderful, wacky world of virtual reality, you'll notice there's two groups of VR games. The games that are actually fun and the games that decide, Hmm, you know what? Fuck the story. Let's just implement an entire physics engine that doesn't feel any different from the previous game. And when we ignore the community for two years, let's just say fuck it and not add anything substantial. My name's Stress Level Zero and I approve this mess. So on this week of I know jack shit about the inner workings of VR and VR game development, let's take a trip down what level of integration makes a VR game fun. And when it's definitely taken too far. Next up, Baja Blast, only a taco bit. This is not Listen up, farmer market lovers. Throw that chart away because this little soybean has Viewy's Hot Gamer Club that you can talk to myself and other farmer market lovers alike. And if you're feeling really healthy, you could join the mega rich patrons on Patreon for exclusive access to videos early, the occasional VC and gamer events, and Viridus Games toe picks. He doesn't know about them, but I'm sharing. All right, grandma, buy your broccoli and let's get out of here. Interacting with any game inside of VR is a touchy subject because not only do you have some fucking nerd saying, if this beer bottle doesn't realistically shatter, with the laws of physics. I'm going to refund this game. As they wear their big screen beyond, they modified to have eye tracking. And on the other spectrum, you have Derek's mom who recently discovered Walkabout Mini Golf and hasn't stopped playing since. There's basically two kind of VR games. Ones that focus on the game part, your mini golfs, boxing, robo recall that desperately needs a sequel. And on the other side, you have the ultra realistic physics based games like Boneworks, Bone Lab, and to some degree Half Life Alec that have much more of an emphasis on realism and physics. It's just this weird balance of game design within VR where you could spike anything and everything thing you want at your friend's head because he eats your cheese balls, Derek. Or you can blind your friend with a golf club because that's the only way of interacting with them. Seriously, pick any two games and you'll notice how immediately different they are unless it's, it's Bone Lab and Boneworks because they feel the exact same. Me and the homies hate Marrow. So with that being said, let me introduce you to Walkabout Mini Golf and Half-Life Alex, two games that have amazing gameplay, but have wildly different takes on interactions. Now, now, Mr. Viewbert the Third Jr., you can't compare Walkabout Mini Golf to Half-Life Alex. They're very different games with different ways of presenting themselves and how they handle gameplay. Sorry, ma'am, you don't have a receipt. This item cannot be returned. I bring up these two wildly different games because one, and two, because it showcases that you can have varying degrees of physics and interactions within VR and still end up with the same result of what I like to call game fun me play on the scale of game fun comma me play i'd rank both half-life alex and walkabout a solid let's hop on and that's no easy feat especially when you consider that i can take a beer bottle sister twister football spiral that shit at some combine and in walkabout i can tell my friend that i'm gonna go backflip off a of costco when i get a bogey Case closed, Your Honor. Point is, Walkabout and Half-Life Alex don't have my grandma's toenails in common, but both continue to be games I hop on regularly, be it alone or with some friends. It shows that if you're making a VR game, you should focus on making the game fun and people will play it. Fun trumps literally all the other side shit in VR. Now, Half-Life Alex versus Bone Lab? I guess we can talk about it. Your hat! There is no your half of the money! Alex and Bone Lab have one thing in common, is that I have specific problems with both. I've said this time and time again, Half-Life Alex is the sole reason I even bought a VR headset. This game was fucking monumental for me since I'm a major Nerd. fucking dork when it comes to Half-Life and when it got announced was the first time in a long time I genuinely got hyped for a game to release. And once it did release and I finally played it, I was fucking hyped. This game is a goddamn masterpiece through everything that is in here. The story, the gameplay, the art style, the physics, it was the coca to my cola, the doctor to my pepper, the costume to my co, would you like to try a free sample? Bone Lab has a similar story. Hyped before release, first time in a long time, couldn't wait to play it. Costco samples were running a little dry. But with Bone Lab, I wasn't hyped after release. I've said it before, but I finished the story in about four and a half hours on day one. This was nothing like Half-Life Alex, since I just spent $40 on a game with very little content. Especially now with patch four being out, I've waited a long time for Bone Lab to actually have more content. But where Bone Lab shines is exactly where Alex fails. In regards to this video, Half-Life Alex doesn't have a whole lot of physics-based interactions. You could pick up a few boxes, grenades, and of course the sister twister mister the police are here beer bottle. But overall, there isn't a whole lot of interactions around the physics engine of Source 2. 
With Bone Lab, yeah, Alex has a much better story and in my opinion is far more worth the money, but I can see that Bone Lab has much more replay value than Half-Life Alex because once I've played through Alex, I've seen more or less everything this game has to offer. With Bone Lab, because everything from boxes to chairs to weapons, everything is physics-based and more or less interactable. I have much more freedom of playing Bone Lab than I do in Half-Life Alex. I specifically remember this the first time I fucking played Half-Life Alex. This is definitely off the script a little bit. I ran out of ammo in this like little cave area at the beginning of the game and I couldn't find more. I was I was just completely out of ammo and I needed to kill a head crab to progress into the story. But I didn't have any fucking ammo and the only thing nearby was a brick. So cue me standing there for 30 minutes using this brick to kill a head crab. And to be honest, I don't know if the brick actually does any damage or if the head crab was just sick of my shit, but this entire story would have never happened in Bone Lab because everything can be your weapon. We're not even going to discuss mods because that's a whole different video and topic in Costco food samples. But because Valve and Stress Level Zero took very different approaches to physics and interactions, my playstyle was entirely flipped playing these two games and how often I still play them was affected too. When one game has very little physics-based objects, I primarily rely on my firearm or the small objects near me like with Jeff and Half-Life Alex. But with everything being my weapon or an object to use, I can be much more creative in how I complete the game and go about solving problems. So again, why the fuck does any of this matter? This is just a message to VR game devs that realism and physics should not be your top priority. And that what makes a VR game fun is the actual gameplay. Walkabout Mini Golf to Half-Life Alex to Bone Lab, all of these games have wildly different takes on how this is done, and each one shines in its own regard. Five second ad, this video was sponsored by Glitch. Use code VOE 20% off, link in the description. Again, if you're making a VR game, please don't take realism too seriously. Make the game fun and interesting rather than a focus on if a sister twister, my mother Kister is falling at the fucking Isaac Newton laws of physics accuracy it's supposed to. Thank you to our mega rich patrons, Fumble55, Retro, and Wes. Maybe if I start working on my own VR game, I'll make it so all physics based objects clip through everything, but the gameplay will absolutely be fucking stellar. So whenever you get a kill, you just float into the abyss never to play the game again. There's basically two kind of VR games. That's one of them.